in New York? I'm in Los Angeles at the moment. You're in Los Angeles. I, I guess I said good morning. I guess that doesn't apply to everybody on this Zoom call. But <laughs> it is almost, uh, well, in Montreal, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. But as you know, some people are from the West Coast in Canada in the same time zone as, uh, as you. So I will be uh, the host for today. So, uh, well, as you know, uh, you will be speaking with uh, young people and you'll be answering questions from from them, they're, they're from all over Canada. And uh, we'd like you to know that we admire your work and what you did uh, in amazing movies like uh, The Sixth Sense, uh, AI, and more recent ones as well. Um, so, you know, today we'll be speaking uh, with children who are part of Young Global Citizens. The movement aims to empower young people to become engaged citizens and leaders of the future. So we hope to discuss with you you know we want to talk about youth hope for the future and changing the world in any way we can so we appreciate your presence and i will start with a, a question why is it important for you to be involved socially and to give hope to young people well first of all thank you so much and, and thanks to everybody for uh, for being here today um yeah i mean i, I have been uh, given a whole lot of privileges in my life and a lot of people helped me along in, in my career and have uh um, you know, I have a lot to be grateful for. And I think that it becomes the responsibility of, of any public figure who has benefited in that way uh, to try and, and give back in whatever way is possible. And uh, I know that I can always be doing more to do that, particularly uh, in the past year when, you know, we've been we've all been under quite a lot of uh, stress and, and pressure with the unique circumstances of the pandemic, uh, being involved in the community and being involved, um, you know, particularly with young people. Uh, is just something that has become uh, very important to me. Uh, my mom is a sixth grade teacher, so I think mm. uh, a big influence on me and, and seeing how important it is to, uh, to try and um, be a, a good influence in some way uh, with kids at that age uh, has come from her. So I try and follow her example too. Amazing. So most of the questions you'll get today are from uh, young people in Canada, but we do have a question from Morocco and I'll be uh, reading it myself. So the question is, uh, and it comes precisely from Ecole Keltum in Tangier. And so it's precisely about the pandemic. As you mentioned, it's been you know, a complicated year for uh, many of us. So how have you been taking care of yourself in that context, in that situation? Uh, how have you dealt with it? It has been a, a, a challenging year. Um, I know I've I've been lucky to uh, to have been able to be isolated in that way. I know that's a privilege. You know, a lot of people have had to go back to work sooner and, and in more risky situations than I have. So <clears throat> I definitely uh, appreciate everything that everyone is going through. Um, but just me personally, I think the biggest challenge when you're isolating so much is losing that face-to-face -face connection with people. And even if you are staying in touch with texting and phone calls and now Zoom with people, uh, it really becomes evident over a long period of time how much you need that face-to-face -face interaction. And also how important it is um, to interact with strangers. I mean, we're all keeping in touch with our friends and family, but yeah. having those little daily interactions with people at the store or on the subway or in the park and everything, it really has a big effect on your on your mental state. So. Just being uh, being aware of that, and you know, uh, accounting for times when I know that it's it's got me down to to be deprived of that human interaction has um, uh, has helped me get through it. And also just on trying to to focus on on things in the future, even though the uh, the calendar for when we'd be able to get back to our lives in the way we want to has been unclear. Just focusing on how I'll use that time when I am allowed to you know be out in public again uh, yeah. has helped me sort of uh, get through these times. And back to work in full, full motion. And right. Yeah. I have been working on a couple things at the end of last year, uh, but under COVID protocols. And it's very strange to, to shoot something. Yeah. You know, one of the great things about being on set is, you know, just chatting with people and, and hanging out. And that could not happen at all. We'd shoot very quickly and then go back to our dressing rooms. And, you know, you, you can't just uh, shoot the breeze with people. And that's that's been very strange to, to go through. It's strange indeed. Okay, so let's take um, another question from someone who will ask directly from Roseburn Elementary School in Manitoba. Uh, please ask your question. Dr. Osmond, thank you so much for participating in this interview with us. As a child, how did you prepare for such big roles? How do you feel your stardom as a child affected your later life? 
And do you have any advice for children who might want to experience fame or become famous? Hello, thank you for your question. Um, yeah, it's it's very strange for me because I started working at a at a time when the media environment was very different. And uh, just with regard to your last question, I think it 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 probably feels like right now that everybody is you know in that Warholian way. Everybody is a little famous now because of how engaged we are digitally with everything. Everybody has exposure to. Um, the media and to, and to social media uh, in a way that just wasn't around when I was a kid. So uh, I could not have really envisioned that this would be the nature of being a public figure uh, when I was first getting involved with things. But I think what's helped me is that the most important aspect of it always was just, you know, uh, creating characters and, and shooting film and television and everything. I just love my job so much. The, the publicity aspect of it and, and the, the part of being a public figure was just sort of a, a bonus and not as much of a focus as what I would be doing on set. Uh, I was very lucky that my, uh, my dad had worked in theater for many years. And so when I was doing a lot of those roles when I was younger, I was really learning from him about how to rehearse and how to study a script and, and to develop a character in a way that's been uh, uh, very useful to me even now uh, as an adult, almost 30 years into, into working on this. Yeah, yeah. long <laughs> career already. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, thank you for this question. Uh, we're um, going to uh, ask a question coming from uh, Max from Robert Adams Middle School. There you go, Max. So bonjour. <laughs> My name bonjour. is Cynthia Texera, and I'm a French immersion teacher at Robert Adams Middle School in Holliston, Massachusetts, located just outside of Boston. So we are not Canadian. We're American, but we speak French. Yay! Yay. Um, my seventh grade student, Maxwell Harrington, has a question for you on behalf of his French immersion classmates, premièrement en français, and then in English. D'accord. Um, bonjour, je suis Max. Bonne question. Il y a deux semaines, le chef national belge de l'Assemblée de Première Nation a accepté d'écrire la préface de notre prochain livre intitulé Coast to Coast to Coast, How Children Came Together During a Pandemic to Help the Planet. La semaine dernière, Liv Schreiber a également accepté de contribuer quelques petites peintures et gribouages de à notre livre. Envisagez-vous de contribuer à quelque chose que nous pourrions inclure, inclure dans le livre pour, pour les enfants puissant en profiter. Le livre servira, servira également à réguler des fonds pour accepter des communautés autochtones à l'eau. Nice French, nice French. Do you want to ask uh, the question in English now so Haley can understand? Okay. Two weeks ago, National Chef Belgard of the Assembly of First Nations agreed to write forward of our upcoming book called Coast to Coast to Coast, How Children Came Together During a Pandemic to Help the Planet. Last week, Liv Schreiber also agreed to contribute some small paintings or doodlings to our book. Would you consider contributing something we could include in the book for children to enjoy? This book will also go to fundraising efforts for indigenous communities access to water. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds like a, a wonderful book. And yeah, uh, whatever whatever you'd like me to contribute, I'd be happy to, to do what, uh, what Mr. Schreiber did too. Do you have a uh, hidden talent, something you can uh, <laughs> suggest? <laughs> uh, I've, visual arts is a real struggle for me, but okay. you know, I, can, I can doodle. I can, I can give it uh, my best. Maybe it will be so uh, <laughs> uh, such a bad drawing that it will actually, you know, kind of become a, a new sort of art in itself. <laughs> um, I, one thing I, I, I was just, I uh, started trying to learn the clarinet yesterday. I don't know if that will fit in a book, but that's really the... clarinet <laughs> for, for a role or just for your pleasure. Just, just to, to keep busy. Uh, and why the, clarinet the... amongst all the instruments? I, I had a friend who was very persuasive, who okay. uh, who's who's learning right now, and so I, I picked one up uh, online, and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna try. Very cool. <laughs> you might end up in a jazz band. 
I would love that, yeah. <laughs> that would be lovely. Okay, let's take another question now from Prince Philip School in Saskatchewan. Hello, my name is Arnold. And if you could speak to your younger self today, what would you advise yourself to do? Would you follow a similar path? Hello, thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier. Um, it's, it is sort of a, a conflict between wanting to have the opportunities to work on, on the projects that I, that I enjoy doing and trying to maintain a de uh, degree of privacy as much as possible. So um, I'm pretty pleased with where I've ended up in that regard, where I, I have a lot of great opportunities, but um, I uh, admire a lot of the people who are more you guys' age, younger people who are getting involved today have a lot more pressure to, to be in the public eye in a way that I didn't have to deal with when I was younger. So uh, I get, but my advice to myself would probably not have much to do with the career and more something that is uh, uh, evident in this interview. I really wish I had learned other languages. That's something oh. that gets harder as you get older. I still would like to do that, but I'm very envious of people who are in, uh, you know, immersion programs because it's so useful and, you know, with travel and with work, it's just really great when people are able to speak lots of languages. So I'm going to, well, for, for, for Canada, it's easier as there's a big French community and I'm, I'm in Quebec, right? So I'm, I'm a Francophone and a lot of students all across Canada have French classes, but you never had uh, two classes for with another language no i i did uh i took several years of spanish in high school and i can still oh. read it pretty well but just to be conversant with it you have to practice a lot more than i did i um when i was in college i went with one of my professors to do a um theater exchange program in havana and i was there I for a month with and that was the most immersion i'd ever had and i got pretty good that month but i didn't keep it up as much as i should oh. <laughs> I understand. And so many uh, people speak Spanish in the United States. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, that's why I really don't have much of an excuse. I live in Los Angeles and <laughs> I speak Spanish here. So. But I can read it. I can read it. <laughs> okay, let's go get another question coming now from uh, PVSD Remote Learning in Saskatchewan. <laughs> from PVSD Remote Learning in Saskatchewan, looking back on 20 plus years of career, what memory do you cherish the most? That's a, uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I've been very lucky and I've worked in uh, a lot of places on a lot of different things. I should mention I've worked in Canada probably at least half a dozen times, you know, including nice. one of the last things I worked on, we were shooting what we do in the shadows in Toronto. So I love, love visiting Canada and love working there. Uh, but if, if I had to pick one, one memory that really stands out just because it was the longest commitment to uh, actually, that's not technically true. My longest project is kingdom hearts. Cause that's been going on for 20 years. But yeah. um, it's uh, that was different from a film I did called uh, AI in 2001. And we were working on that movie for almost two years from our first meetings to when it came out and then to promoting it around the world. Um, and just all the, the preparation and working on a film of that magnitude and working with Steven Spielberg and, uh, you know, the enormous productions that, that he manages, uh, that really uh, sticks out in my mind. That was an experience that made me want to somehow, uh, get involved in directing something of my own someday. Cause being around someone like that, you learn so much about how to, to manage such a difficult job and, uh, to work on a project where the themes were very, uh, uh, special to me because, um, you know, I think there's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence and will continue to be a lot of talk. Uh, and we were sort of dealing with the philosophical questions that that topic brings up 20 years ago and the technology is nowhere near where it is now. So that's a project that will always be interesting to reflect on because the the topics we discussed are continuing to evolve in the present. Yeah, it must have been fascinating for sure, for yeah. sure. And 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 good luck with that with the directing. It is a, <laughs> yeah. it, it is a big uh, enterprise. <laughs> yeah, it is. Very good. Next question comes from Sudbury Catholic School in Ontario. Please ask your question. So we have a couple questions for you. So uh, first off, we're going to start with my student teacher, Miss Buju, who is just joining us today. Actually, it's her first day in our class, so she's going to start us off. Hello everyone, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity and a big thank you to uh, Haley as well for this amazing, you know, again, opportunity to speak with all of us today. So we're going to ask a few questions, um, if that would be okay, of course. So the first one is the following. 
So the entire existence of our young global citizens movement is due to how deeply concerned we are about the state of the planet. Is this something that also concerns you? Out of the 17 goals of the United Nations, which goals do you think are especially important in 2021 and for the future? All right. Thank you for your question. Uh, uh, yes, I am very, very concerned about the, the state of the, the planet. You know, when I was in school, I think there was a lot more uh, optimism that we would get a handle on some of these problems with climate change and poverty and, you know, protecting the environment and everything. And I, I feel bad for young people today because they've grown up in a time of almost constant crisis with, you know, the climate, with the economy and now the pandemic. It's uh, I know it can be difficult to to be optimistic about it. But paradoxically, seeing that there are still young people who, instead of um, rightfully being a little bit mad with the, the those of us who are older for not fixing these problems uh, before, uh, are still hopeful and are still working to change the things that need to be uh, changed in the future if we're going to have a stable uh, planet that we can all live on together. So yes, I was looking at, th those were the, the UN's- uh, um, Resolutions, yes. Yeah, so it's resolutions. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about them, it's hard to pick just one because they're so interconnected. And in uh, ending poverty and uh, protecting indigenous communities and having access to clean water all flows from a global commitment to uh, trying to avert climate change and trying to be creative with undoing the damage that we've done. And it is a big task. Um, Things have gotten a little bit better just in the past couple of months. Now we have an administration that, you know, is at least open to hearing um, uh, environmental arguments in this country. But uh, just my personal thing is just even though, um, you know, I, I am a supporter of this government, we want to pressure them to just be much more ambitious than they being to rejoin the Paris Climate Accords, to to really engage internationally in a way that the United States hasn't done in the past four years and wasn't so great at uh, before. So uh, I definitely more, but uh, it's nice to have those guidelines and it's nice to see the example that young people are setting in, uh, in committing to fighting these things. Great, thank you. So our, our next question comes from um, one of my students. So we're grade six. So Michaela, you are up. Are you still an avid, avid golfer? What do you learn from this sport and why do you recommend it? Thank you for your question. I, yeah, I love golf and that was, that's kind of been the only outdoor thing that we've been able to do with other people in, in California during the pandemic. So that was a, that was a real lifesaver being able to go outside and, and uh, have an activity with, uh, with people that didn't live in your house. Um, but yeah, it's golf is just a really, really difficult game uh, that, you know, it's interesting when you watch when you watch a basketball game, you don't see LeBron James accidentally throw the ball into the stands. You know, like there's, uh -huh. there's a level of skill. And what's interesting about golf is that even the greatest golfers in the world will just completely mess up sometimes. It's so difficult and such a mentally precise game that you can uh, uh, you can really just um, just lose it even when you're one of the best golfers in the world. So that makes an interesting challenge for me. And the combination of having lots of little mechanical things that you have to be aware of. And then paradoxically, when you're actually doing your swing, not think of any of them at all and have to just kind of clear your mind in, in a way is something that's very similar to what acting is like, because you do lots and lots and lots of preparation. And then when you're actually doing it, it needs to be second nature and you can't be thinking about those specific things. So uh, if anybody is interested in starting it, I'd highly recommend it. It's got, it's brought me a lot of, uh, a lot of enjoyment over the years. Although I know you guys have to deal with snow in a way that we don't in Southern California. I yeah, know the but skiing is fun. Though. Yeah, skiing. I love to ski too. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And did you have another question for us, uh, Dakota? Yes, we did. So I know you've mentioned it briefly already, but what's in the future for you? What are your professional or personal goals for the future? And what do you look most forward to about after the pandemic? What do you think there are some less, or what do you think there are some lessons? What lessons do you think we could learn from the pandemic? There we go. <laughs> it's uh yeah, I mean it's been it's been a tough experience, but it has absolutely made me appreciate all the little small things that you know I take for granted in daily life, you know, interactions with people, <laughs> even going to the store, you know, shopping is not something that you know, going to the grocery store is not something that I loved to do before, but you know. Now that'll seem like a treat to be able to stand in the produce aisle, you know, stuff like that. So I'm hoping that there is some sort of global effect where 
people all sort of share in that experience together and that we're just glad to be around each other again and that will have some sort of mellowing effect on us all as we get back to living daily life. But for me, um, I have, uh, I've been doing a lot of voiceover work uh, during the pandemic. So I have some projects of that nature coming up in the next few months. Um, you enjoy that too? You enjoy that as yeah, well? I love that. That's, that's a really great exercise. As, as Why? Why? To create a character only using your voice. Uh, yeah. If you're just isolating one part of your, your, uh, um, your tools as a performer uh, yeah. to create something that normally you'd have your whole body to do. And also in the specific projects that I've worked on, uh, oftentimes we're dubbing them in English uh, from the original Japanese. And there's a very odd kind of way where you have to time out words to match what the person's mouth is doing. And you have to, and it's, it's a collaboration with our translators and with our producers in Japan. Uh, this is for Kingdom Hearts where we have to get the meaning in Japanese and English, two very different languages, and it has to be the same time expended talking. And it's just a very odd thing that that has to, to do to make it make sense. So I, I enjoy that challenge. Yeah, um, once you master it, it must be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun, yeah. And when we get it right, it's very it's very rewarding. We're, we, uh, uh, we get very excited when we have a really difficult, especially like multi-paragraph lines, when we get those to line up perfectly, it's always very rewarding. Um, right. yeah. And then, um, I've mentioned directing is definitely the next step I want to take in my career. And in the meantime, I have a show called Goliath, uh, that's going to come out on Amazon this year and a show called the Kaminsky method, which we shot last year during the uh, pandemic, uh, that will come out on oh, the Kaminsky method with, uh, with Michael Douglas. That's right. Yeah. Michael Douglas. Yeah. And so it's, uh, it's a new season. Um, Yes. Yeah. This will be the, the third and final season and it'll, it'll come out sometime later this year. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Nice projects. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, did we have other questions or this is it for today? We had us. Hello. Time for you to ask your question. On February 22, we also... On February 22, we also asked Leif Schraber, what do you think about the responsibility of stars and global influencers to do their part in the world? Should young people be careful who they choose to trust and follow as their idol or role model? That's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we uh, all of us in the public eye really need to pay close attention to what we say and how we say it, particularly on social media where uh it's, it can be hard to tell the difference between a joke and a serious statement sometimes. And you see people kind of um, uh, making mistakes in that sphere a lot. So, um, you know, social media is a, is a big thing to deal with, but it's also, I think it's a, a positive thing that it helps us just be more careful about what we say and the sort of image that we present to the world. And when it comes to young people looking for role models, um, yeah, yeah, it can be very difficult. It can, and I'm sure it can be hard to, follow someone or be a fan of someone and then they say something that you know is not okay and that they do something that you know is not okay. So just, I have tried to, to and it, this can be hard to do, but even, you know, artists or certain figures that I'm a really big fan of, I try not to be, to, to elevate that person too much on a pedestal and to try and have more of a, of a synthesis of the best qualities of everybody that I admire. Cause I don't, I won't fully agree with everything that, you know, everyone that I, I like in some respects has done but trying to just navigate that and to find, you know, the most uh, moral way to, uh, to support artists or to support certain figures. Um, but it's difficult. And as you can tell, people a lot older than you guys are, are still struggling to find the right way to do it uh, at a much more advanced age. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Anyone else wanted to ask a question today? Um, our prairie, coming from Prairie Valley again, um, Cora is going to ask our next question. Um, we have like, it's like a little bit of quite like stacked questions. So <laughs> the first one is, who is someone that helped you in your life? And who have you met in life? Sorry, who have you met in your life whom you feel young people should research and look more up to? And do you have some suggestions of people or causes we should research? Well, thank you for your question. Yeah, I, a lot of people have helped me in my life. I've been very lucky. I've worked with a lot of uh, older actors who uh, definitely didn't have any obligation to 
uh, invest any time in me or to, you know, to, you know, even talk to me beyond being on set, but, uh, uh, they, they did the opposite. You know, lots of people I worked with going back to Tom Hanks when I was four years old were very kind, uh, did a lot to explain how it, you know, how things worked on set, you know, what to expect in a career. Uh, we talked about uh, the movie AI earlier. One of the many reasons I admire Steven Spielberg is that he keeps in contact with such an enormous number of people. He's worked with so many thousands of people and particularly the young actors he's worked with. He stays part of your life, you know, that sends letters. I've, you know, seen him many times since we worked together and he's just very invested in making sure that the people he works with, that it's a good experience for them and a positive experience for them, particularly if, he, if he's working with them when they're kids. So that's someone whose example I, I look up to uh, if, you know, if I stay in this industry uh, for as many years as, as he has. Uh, and when it, uh, you guys, I, I think, are ahead of me on, on causes to support because that's uh, the things we talked about, about access to water, climate change, um, in some of those other UN um, standards talking about pre pre uh, preventing des desertification um, and uh, deforestation. That's a big cause for us here in Los Angeles because we have always been a desert and now we have lots of people using a lot more water than uh, is sustainable in our part of the country. So trying to find a good way to deal with that from the personal choices about, you know, planting uh, climate appropriate things in your yard to the bigger questions about policy, about where the water goes and why. Um, that's something I'm very concerned about. Uh, last summer, we had, you know, this annual uh, occurrence of having enormous uh, forest fires in California. And uh, I was wearing a, a smoke mask in my house. The fires got so close last year. So the, the urgency of that is is very clear every year and trying to work uh, to lower emissions and to have policies that uh, protect communities from uh, from those climate effects uh, is very important to me. And then the last thing I think in your stack question someone to research. Uh, this just occurred to me because she sadly uh, passed away uh, last year, but a teacher of mine named Mary Overly, uh, she uh, founded this um, a concept called Viewpoints. And she has a book called, uh, it's called The Six Viewpoints, I believe. She just published it recently. But uh, Standing in Space is what her book is called. And she was just a real pioneer in a certain way of thinking about theater performance and theater direction that has been really, really influential in me. And if anybody is interested in, uh, you know, working uh, behind the camera or working on stage, it's just a very interesting way to think about abstraction and about creating new work from places that you might not uh, have expected before. So that would be my, my name I would throw out there. Wonderful, thank you. Do we have another question? You've all been wonderful. You've all been wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And Joel, I mean, uh, Haley, Joel, you've been amazing. Uh, you've been very gracious in accepting this interview. Uh, you're a model of positivity, uh, and we admire you very much. And I think you've left a, a new generation of kids with several uh, movies they should go back to and study after this interview. And you're agreeing to give children this opportunity to, to grow their confidence, their communication skills and thinking skills will make a huge difference for them. So, you know, we have other upcoming interviews. Maybe eventually you could return as a host uh, and, um, and interview inspiring people. But meanwhile, uh, we hope you can accept this honor honorary title we confer upon you of a young global citizen. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you everybody for your questions. I really enjoyed talking to you today. Thank you, Haley Joel Osman. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for, uh, for, uh, for your uh, wonderful questions. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank Merci you. beaucoup. Bye bye. Merci. Merci. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir. Bye. 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 bye.